has marked its deadliest 24 hours last week, with more than 2,900 lives lost. We have right now roughly 90 ventilators running. A world turned upside down. Drive on it until you actually see it coming at you in a wall of sight. What we did in Jerusalem with respect to the embassy. But there is a movement out there right across North America. Everyone is at their limit. Thousands of times smaller than a grain of sand. That is baffling scientists. I have platoons of Montreal's riot squad are on duty. We are in a dire situation. We've seen pathogens emerge all over the world. We just don't really know what we're doing. The, the fact that you brought American sanctions to bear. Show said that they were ordered to do it. We are prepared to sustain this response. Tell you, you do not want to experience a storm like this. Well, I guess that's one of the questions that a lot of people are asking right now. Is this the end? Amen? Is this the end? Good morning. My name is Pastor Jamie. I hadn't been here in a long time, so it's, it's glad that you welcomed me back. Amen? It's good to be here. If you're a guest with us today, thank you so much for being with us. My beautiful family is up here on the front row, and we have recovered, and God is good. So thank you for the calls and the, the cards and the prayers and the Facebook messages and all of that stuff. We are fine and well, and I am ready to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. It's good. We start a brand new series today called The Comeback. And in this series, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to lay a foundation for the series, and then we're going to pick up next week with some really powerful things. It's going to be a lot about the end times, what we're dealing with right now, but also personal, spiritual revival. Because if there's anything that I feel like we need right now in this moment, we need to begin to stand up and be who God has called us to be. And you can't do that out of your own might or your own power. We need the power of the Holy, I'm fixing to get Pentecostal on you, ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we need. But today, I just want to start everything out um, with a question. And the question is the title to my sermon. It's this, are we there yet? Look at your neighbor right now and say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? So many people are asking questions in this moment. How many of you have asked some questions to people or maybe had some conversations about, is this the end times? I mean, anybody just raise your hand right now. There's a bunch of people in the room. In the first service also, there was a lot of people. And those are questions that are, that are actually coming forth, you know. Is there going to be an end of the world? Are we living in the end times? And here's the truth, yes. There is going to be an end to the world. I can't tell you when Jesus is going to come back, okay? But here's what I can tell you. We don't have to be afraid of the end of the age or the return of Christ. If anything, we should be encouraged as believers because we know that one day a trumpet is going to sound and Jesus is going to split the eastern sky and he's going to call his church. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, we just had that blessed assurance today. So here, here's what I want you to understand before we get into the text, and then we're going to pray before we get into the word. Is that cool? Jesus said this, no one knows the day or the, t or, or, or the time, the hour. No one knows but the Father. You know what that means? The Bible really is stating that no one knows. So if you're following somebody and they're a prophetic voice and they say, hey, Jesus is going to come back on December 25th, 2020, I mean, I'd probably quit following that person. Just because the Bible says no one knows the hour. No one knows the day. Listen, no one but the Father. What Jesus was saying right there is he was saying, I don't even know. I don't know when I am going to come back, but when the Father says, hey, tag, you're it, go back for the church, Jesus is going to split that eastern sky. 
right? So right now in these seasons, I don't think we need to be going around and just trying to focus on, oh my gosh, is the end coming? Is the end coming? And if you're tripping out like that and you're, you're, you're kind of flipping out in yourself and you're going, oh, is the end coming? Is the end coming? You probably need to have a checkup from the neck up, Okay. Because if you're really worried and you're afraid about that, I don't know if you're really secure in your relationship with Christ. Because as a blood-bought, Bible-believing man or woman of God, it shouldn't be, oh my God, oh my gosh, is Jesus coming? It should be, hey, hey, it's getting sooner. Jesus is about to come. Come on, somebody. Right? You should be excited about it. So I want to pray over our text today. And I wanted to just come up in here and blow up. I wanted to just preach because I love it. And Jesus gave me, you know, usually he gives me like some sticky statements or maybe some different phrases that I can use that maybe you could take in your notes. And I don't know if those phrases will come out today because I'm just being led by the Holy Spirit because God gave me scripture today. He didn't give me all the little stuff. He just said, read this. So we're going to read some scripture today and I'm going to kind of go through that with you. But before we do, let's just pray together today. And can we pray for our president and first lady also, please? Uh, because, you know, they're dealing with some stuff and they're getting a lot of hate and a lot of this stuff. And I don't care if they would have been Republican or Democrat. We would be praying for our leader of the country. Amen. So we're going to do that today. So, Father, today we just we glorify who you are and, and everything that you're doing in our church and in our midst. And, Father, before we get into the scriptures today, we just want to acknowledge that we love you, that we're here for you. We're not here to see man today. We're here to, to experience a loving father uh, 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 and son, Jesus. So, so we just ask you right now that you'll just pour out your spirit upon all flesh in this room, that you allow us to get out of the way and just listen to what your word is saying. And Father, right now, I just lift up President Trump and his wife and his team and all of the other people around our country and the world that is affected by this disease, this thing that is going around. Me and my family, we just went through it. We know that it's a real thing that we're dealing with, God, but we just pray over our president over our country, over our world, over us individually. Father, we pray that you'll bring healing to our land, but before healing to our land, that you'll bring revival into our hearts. I believe that you are shaking and awakening the church, and I pray, Jesus, that we don't miss this moment, that we continue with it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Matthew 24. If you would, pull out your Bibles. If you don't bring a physical Bible, please start bringing a physical Bible. That way you can write in it and you can kind of go through. We're going to do some expository teaching today, which is where you're just going to read a verse or two, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit, and then we're just going to pick up with the next verse. Are y'all cool with that? All right. Matthew chapter 24. When you start talking about the signs of the end of the age, you've got to go to Matthew 24, and you've got to see what Jesus was teaching his disciples. Look at what it says in verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, which, meaning, which means this, was, this happened and took place and was scripted with Jesus and his disciples only. So this is like a little private meeting. They're hanging out. You know, they've come off of some ministry, and, and they're sitting there, and the disciples look over at Jesus, and they're like, hey, man, would you tell us something? Tell us this. When will these things be? When is things going to happen? When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? When, when are you going to come back? When's the comeback going to happen? When's the end of age going to happen? Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. Do you understand that there's a lot of deception that's going around today? There's a lot of deception. I, I literally heard, I believe it was on CBN or something like that, I heard that there's this Jewish rabbi that is now claiming that he is the Messiah and he's come back and, and all of these types of things. Here's what you have to do. You can't listen to any of that stuff because Jesus literally himself said, many are going to come and you're going to try or, or you're going to have the opportunity to be deceived. So take heed that no one deceives you. Verse 5, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. How many of you's grandma used to talk about wars and rumors of wars? Come on, somebody. Anybody? Am I the only one? Yes, right back here. Yeah. So, so I was raised by my grandparents, and they were very religious, spiritual people. But every time a war would be, it wouldn't be anything else. It would just be wars. But every time a war would break out, my grandmother would go, we better watch the east because Jesus is fixing to split the eastern sky. Amen. And it's, it's not that that stuff wasn't going to happen, you know, or whatever. And it wasn't that she was 
you know, wrong, but it was just like, hey, back then I didn't really know my Bible, but now we go back and we go, okay, let's see what Jesus says about these wars and rumors of wars in context, not in grandma terms, amen? But in context, let's look at this. He said, there's gonna be wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. In other words, Jesus is like, hey, you're gonna hear of wars, you're gonna hear of war rumors of wars, but don't trip. Like if Jesus was a millennial right now, he'd say, hey, dog, don't trip, amen? Don't trip, it's gonna be okay. There's gonna, you're gonna hear these things. And then he makes this statement, which I think is very, very cool. He says, see that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass. This is part of the plan. When you're seeing everything that's happening, everything that's going on, you gotta understand that this is part of the master's plan. It's not that he's, he just wants death and all this kind of stuff, but he understands that we live in a fallen world and these things are gonna have to happen before he comes back, all right? So we can't be troubled in these seasons for all these things must come to pass, but the end, listen, is not yet. The end is not yet. So the scripture really breaks down and shows us that, hey, when we see some of these things, the end is not yet. But then he transitions in verse seven, and I want you to really dig into this because I got seven signs that I want to give to you today. So if you got a pen and piece of paper, they're not going to come up on the screen. So you're going to have to be very intent and listen. But verse seven, he transitions and he says four, and then he's, he's, he's foreshadowing. He's showing you what's going to happen as the end is drawing near, okay? So all of these other things, you know, the end is not yet for nation, he says, right? Nation will rise against nation. This is sign number one. If you were here about five or six weeks ago, Josh Hanna came in and he preached, it may have been seven or eight now, but he came in and he preached and he preached out of this text and, and he actually preached some of the signs and this is one of them that he preached uh, that day, I went ahead and preached it again because I know y'all don't even remember that sermon, um, right? <laughs> I, you know, that's just how we do it, right? What pastor preached last week? I don't know. Somebody asked me what I was preaching this morning. I'm like, I don't remember. Uh, I'll tell you in the second service. But he talked about how that Greek word for nation is the Greek word ethnos, where we get ethnic group, and it's not like Saudi Arabia is going to come against Iraq. It's ethnic group against ethnic group, and, and you don't have to be a scientist to really, a rocket scientist, to understand that there's ethnic groups against ethnic groups right now, and the enemy is causing a bunch of division in our world. Not just in our country, even though that we really need to address, address the racial divide in our country, but the enemy is running rampant all across our world in this right here. Nation will rise against nation. He goes on and he says, in kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Here's, here's a, a sign number two, pestilences, okay, and earthquakes in various places. We see that happening. Do you know that COVID-19 is a pestilence? And you can say it's fake, phony, or political if you want to. I've experienced it. They just called it a different sickness. I mean, I've experienced it. My family has experienced it. I've got close friends that have experienced it. We've got people in our church that have experienced it. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I just think it's part of what's going to happen before Jesus comes back. And we're living in this moment. I don't know if y'all understand that or not, but we're living in this moment and we're literally seeing biblical prophecy come to pass right before our eyes. We're living in the times where we're literally seeing what Jesus said in the Bible come to pass. Are y'all with me today? But then he says in verse eight, he says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Isn't that what he said? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Another version says birth pains. This is the beginning of the birth pains. You know what that means, right? This is only the beginning. So if we're going around and we're going, oh gosh, what are we going to do? What are we, guys, this is only the beginning. We're seeing the signs of the times and it should be comforting. I wanted to pause there for a moment because everybody's like, comforting? This should be comforting? Yes, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Because I've probably been preaching about 10 minutes right now, right? Some of you's like, no, 30. 
He's been 30. But I've probably been preaching about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. But I, I, I want to tell you, you're closer right now than you were before this service started with Jesus coming back. You're closer. And that should be comforting for the believer. If that's not comforting for you, you may need to have a little checkup from the neck up, amen? And you need to evaluate your relationship with Christ because what we're experiencing should not be fearful. If you're stricken with fear, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. What's happening should be fearful for us. It should be comforting knowing that God is on his way back. God's on his way back. So you go, well, what's my role? What's my responsibility? What do I do? Now is the time to stamp up. Now's the time to be who God has called you to be. Y'all remember the first weekend? I, I don't know. I think it was, it was either March the 22nd or the 29th. I think it may have been the 29th. But March the 29th, the first online service only. I preached to an empty room. And as I was preaching to an empty room that day, I made some statements that still is in my spirit, in my heart. It's been here since day one. And I can't shake it. You know, I, I wanted to just immediately get behind the pulpit and go, guys, everything's going to be okay. We're going to get through it. When God is saying, wake up, church, wake up. I believe that there's this spiritual awakening that God is wanting to do in the lives of the believer, that there's this revival that needs to be taking place that now is our time. Do y'all remember this verbiage, uh, a verbiage? This is our moment. Do y'all remember that? Come on, church. This is our moment. This is not a time to be fearful and hide. This is our moment to stand up and be who God has created us to be. And I don't care who you are or what your background is or where you're from. God has a plan and a purpose for you. And his plan and a purpose for you is not to sit on the sideline and not get in the game. He has a play for you to play. He's got a purpose for you. And a lot of people get permission to meddle just for a minute. Permission to meddle right up here. Wanda, permission to meddle. So this is just between me and you. God bless you. I've said it before. If y'all don't like what I say, this is just between me and Wanda. Some people need to get off of their booty. Oh, there's two of you. Hey! Can you say booty in church? Bless them, Jesus. Some people have got spiritual lazy, spiritually lazy, 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 and using this excuse, well, I just don't know. I don't know. You going to the ball games, you going to the movie theater, you going to the grocery store, you going everywhere else, but you can't come to church? I don't understand. Uh, now, I know we have, we, we have our online crowd, which is part of our congregation. Now, we've got a lot of people, I know, I've personally talked to them, that need to stay home, and they have different issues and stuff like that. But the majority of the people are saying, no, Pastor, I'm just going to watch you online. Then you call them the next week, and you say, hey, man, how'd you like that sermon? Well, I got distracted, and we went ahead and went out to the park, and we had a good time. And I'm glad you're having a good time, but people are dying and going to hell. People are dying and going to hell, and we have a mandate on our life to do something. This is not some type of rest season for Christians, and we can just walk through life. Well, I'm just resting. I'm taking a break. I'm glad Jesus didn't take a break. I'm glad he didn't say, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. I don't think I can go to that garden, because I know what's going to happen in that garden, and I don't want to go in there. I tell you, well, I'm going to go over here and take a break. No, that's not the mentality that we should have right now. Now is the time for us to step up. We should be excited about the opportunities that we have as Christians right now in this moment to do what he has called us to do. We don't sit back and do nothing. We step up and do anything that needs to be done. Why? Because that's, that's the season that we're in, right? Let's continue in this text before I get too excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go 9 through 12. Because 
remember what I said. This is the beginning of sorrows, right? So let me give you an encouraging word. So now this is verse 9. Then you'll be arrested, persecuted, and killed. Bless him, Jesus. Now it's getting tough. See, we don't know persecution in America. We don't know persecution in America. Look, you got all upset. You got, you got, you know, I wanted to say that. I can't say But you, you got all upset because somebody said they didn't like your church. And you feel persecuted. I can't believe they would say, I don't need to go down there. That's not persecution. Do you understand that right now in the world that there's people that when they confess Christ, they lose their life? Right now in the world, we don't know persecution, and Jesus is saying it. There's literally people being beheaded in other countries. Communist China is literally doing some crazy stuff with Christians right now, persecuting Christians, shutting their churches down, burning churches, doing all kinds of, go, going into homes because they, they have to have church in their homes in a basement and hope nobody finds out about it while going out in the streets and telling people about Jesus. And if they get caught, they could possibly get killed. And here it is living out right in front of us. He said, then you'll be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You'll be hated all over the world because you're my followers. But I just want everybody to like me. If you're a true follower of Jesus, there's going to be a lot of people that don't like you. Listen, there's going to be a lot of people that don't like you. And you can't pay attention to every barking dog along the way, the ones that don't like you. Because if you do, you will never get to your destination. And when they start barking because they don't like you and what you're doing for God and the kingdom and all this kind of stuff, and they don't like your religiosity, and they don't like your little speeches during lunch break, and they don't like that, you just keep talking and walking. Amen? You just keep doing what you know you should do. But then it takes me to verse 10. This is sign number three. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. This is sign number three. Many will turn away from me. Do you want to know what I feel right now in the spiritual realm? I feel that there's a purging happening in the church. I believe that there's a purging happening. I believe that, that Jesus is separating the wheat from the tare. I believe that Jesus is separating those people that are really serious about what he's doing and those people that would care less and church is more of a show to them. Am I making any sense in this place? I believe that there's this purging that is happening. Just look around right now. There's already a, there's, there's a falling away. There was a time where we had to open up a third service because this place was packed. Now, we got a lot of people in here today, and I'm glad that you showed up. But I want to tell you, there's a purging that's happening. God is cutting away some of the things that are just fat. Come on. Well, that sermon wasn't good. That's just basic stuff. I don't like to worship. Too loud, too low, too slow, too fast. <laughs> and I think what God's doing is going, okay, if that's what it's all about for you, then that's cool. But he's raising up a remnant of people like you, like me. And he's saying, I want you to go fight. And I want you to do it with all of your heart. And now is not the time to sit back on your little couch. Now is the time to dress in the armor that I've given you. Now is the time to do what I have called you to do. Now is the time to step up and be the voice of God. Now is the time to change the direction of this country. Do you know that Christians have the ability to change the direction of this country to a good way or a bad way? Let everybody use you as a doorstep or a little doormat, and everybody just wiping their feet. God never called us to be doormats. Come on. God called us to stand up and be the children of God, the people that he has destined us to become. We'll get political on you for a minute. Get out and vote. You want to change something? Get out and vote. Get out and vote. I can't remember the statistic that I heard, so I'm not going to quote that statistic because I can't remember it, and I didn't have any notes today to write anything down on, and, and, but I heard a staggering statistic of how many Christians do not vote, do not vote, and how many of those people are not even registered to vote. If we're going to take a stand against some of these things that the Bible clearly says is wrong, 
We live in a, democ a democracy, this, this country. We have to let our voice be heard. And our voice is heard through that ballot box. Amen. So what you have to do is you've got to get out and vote. You say, Pastor Jamie, it's too low. I'm not registered to vote. No, I know. Tomorrow is the deadline to get registered to vote. If you're not registered to vote, call me. I'll take you to get signed up. Call the church. We, we'll walk you through the whole process. We're not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'm telling you, we need to vote Christian values. I seen a sign the other day that said, Jesus 2020. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about right there. Jesus 2020. Why? Because the world needs us to step up. Jesus needs us to step up. Are you going to step up or are you going to step out? Which one are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just keep on going. It's okay. Sign number three. We, we talked about that one. Verse 11, sign number four. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Many false prophets are going to come up. They're going to deceive many people. They're going to appear. And I want to tell you, if we need voices right now, we need a prophetic voice. We need prophetic voices speaking out over us. But let me tell you what we also need in this season. We need a spirit of discernment. Now, I know I'm preaching a little bit different than I usually preach. But can I just have a conversation with the church today? Man, I was sitting in the chair at a business in town. And I'll be honest, I was getting my hair cut. I get a haircut every week because I like a fresh haircut. That's just how I do it. I'm sorry. Don't make fun of me. But I was sitting in a barber chair, and I always like to go the last, last one. I always kind of schedule myself to be the last one. And I sat down in the barber chair, and me and the barber began to talk, but then Jesus began to talk to me. And he began to tell me about this right here. He brought this scripture up in my spirit, and I began to just kind of decipher what Jesus was saying to me. And he began to talk to me about false prophets and how people are really running after a word. They're looking for a word. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. Come on. If y'all ever, I've been there before. Come on. I need a word right now. I need a word. I need a word, you know. And here's what Jesus spoke to me that day. And now it usually takes me about 35, 40 minutes to get my hair cut, right? Because me and the guy talked. It took an hour and a half that day. An hour and a half went by, and I'm sitting there. I'm crying. I mean, I'm, I'm weeping. I'm crying. I'm going, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because Jesus is just downloading some stuff. And here's what he spoke to me. He said, prophetic voices that have been spot on in the past, the enemy is, is deceiving those voices. And I don't have any specific voice. You just have to discern this yourself. So he's deceiving those voices. They are now saying things in the spiritual world that people are automatically grabbing onto and pulling close because of how spot on they used to be without discerning the voice in the moment. Y'all follow me? I'm telling you, if Jamie Grisham, if Pastor Jamie comes up to you and gives you a word, here's what you should do with it. You should say, okay, go to your prayer closet and say, Jesus, is this for me? Let me discern this. Is this for me? So I'm not saying anything about anybody else. And then he began to drop into my spirit about a fabricated prophetic utterances that are now going forth because it's easy in seasons like this to prophesy and people believe it. Now, let me, let me back up. We need prophetic voices right now. We need to stand up and be prophets. You need those voices. But the Bible says that many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. You've got to have the spirit of discernment. And if I got, if I got anybody in here that's agreeing with me, we got to have the spirit of discernment. The spirit of discernment. So that specific one is sign number four. Let's go to sign number five. We find it in verse 12. Sin will be rampant everywhere. Come on. Sin's going to be rampant everywhere. Hello, wake up. Look at what we're living in. I mean, my goodness gracious, sin is going rampant everywhere. We literally have pastors in pulpits that's scared to say anything from the pulpit because they're scared people may leave their church. And what we've done is we've idolized people's attendance over their transformation. Come on, somebody. 
right? We've idolized the attendance over the transformation in their life. My gosh, forgive us, Jesus, because the main thing is seeing people's lives transformed. And if I say something or if I call you out or if your accountability partner calls you out because you're living in sin, that's on you. That's not on me or them. And what we have to understand is we are living in a season right now in a time where sin is running rampant everywhere. Let me take you uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, just real quick. Told you I just had scriptures today. It says this, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous times are going to come in the last days. For men will be lovers of themselves. You ever known anybody that loves themselves more than they love anybody else around them? Lovers of money. Chasing that dollar, baby. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Hey, man, where you been? Hadn't seen you in church. Well, man, I got a raise, a $75 a week raise, and it took me out of church. Being out of the presence of God is worth $75 a week to you? Come on, man. Surely to goodness God can supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Surely. But we'll be lovers of money. See, we can't take anything with us. We be boasters, proud, right? Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Where's, where's the kids at? Pull them kids in this room. We're going to have to have a conversation, right? We seen it last night in our little four-year-old. My goodness, just want to wear him out, amen? DCS won't let me. I'm just kidding. Wear him out. Disobedience to parents. Listen to this. Unthankful, unholy. Unthankful and unholy. Well, that's a big one. I could probably hang my hat on the word called holiness for my ministry. It's something that God has spoken to me since, oh my goodness, 2001 or two when I started doing what I'm doing. Holiness, why? I'm not talking about perfectionism. I'm not talking about being perfect before God, but I'm talking about living a holy life. And when you know you got sin in your life, falling on your face and repenting of that sin and confessing that sin to God so that he can be that faithful and just God to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. Unholy. Go on to the next verse there. Unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, I think is what I said. Yeah. Traitors, headstrong, don't point. <laughs> headstrong, right? Headstrong, haughty. Listen to this. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Come on, have you ever seen it? Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I love this, verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. In other words, going to church and doing your duty as a Christian, but you are lost, broken down, beat up. You, you're bound to a bunch of addiction and sin. You have, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power that Christ actually brings into your life. And he says this, he says, from such people, turn away. Now, that's pretty powerful, isn't it? That's pretty powerful. To end my sermon, I'm going to pick back up in Matthew 24. We're going to start with the B part of verse 12, go through 14, and then I'm done. I've got one question for you, and this sermon is actually going to continue. I don't do this often, but I'm doing it this week. This specific sermon is going to continue to part two next week, and you don't want to miss it because this is when we get into the nitty-gritty. Matthew 24, 12 through 14, sign number six. Love of many will grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. I think it's a shame, no matter, no matter what party that you agree with in America politically, I think it's a shame for people to get on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook and say, Mr. President, this is what you get. You deserve it. I hope you die. Some of you will take that clip right there. 
We're like, I'm gonna get you. I think it's a shame and it's a disgrace. And it's part of a prophetic utterance that Jesus said. And he said, the love of many will grow cold. No heart, there's no heart in it. Do you understand what times we're living in? But here's what he says, this is the encouraging thing. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Come on somebody. The one who endures to the end is gonna be saved. That one's the one that's gonna be saved. See, some of you, if you don't watch it, you'll start your journey and you'll start running your journey, right? And as you're running your journey, you'll stop and you'll be so tired. Man, I just don't know if I can go anymore. Man, that divorce about took me out. Man, that addiction about took me out. I just don't know if I can continue. No, 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 no. The spirit of the living God could get inside of you and when it's inside you, he will give you the endurance to overcome anything that you're facing. So what you gotta do is you gotta keep going, why? Because of Matthew 24, 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And then the last sign, sign number seven, and I'm closing. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached. The good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all, listen, so that all nations, all nations, not some nations, not everybody that's around just the internet, all nations are going to hear it, and then the end will come. You want to know that when the end's going to come? Right there, Jesus just laid it out in Matthew chapter 24. So here's my question that I want to end with and begin next week's sermon with. So where should our focus be? So if that's the case, as a Christian, what's my responsibility? What's my job from this point? Knowing that the signs are there, the, the signs are coming, we're living in the midst of it, now what's my responsibility? That question I will answer next week. Let me pray with you today. Father, thank you for every person in this room. God, I pray that if there's anybody in this room that are struggling, they're struggling with different things, God, your word says that many will begin to turn away from you. I know that there's a purging that is happening right now, and I pray that you'll begin to deal with the hearts of every person, whether they're online or in this room right now. I pray that you'll begin to deal with our hearts. God, because I know that there's people that are lovers of themselves or lovers of money or boasters or proud or all the other things that you listed there in 2 Timothy chapter 3. There's a lot of those things that are happening, but God, we have the opportunity to repent of any of those things today. So Father, if there's anybody in this room that needs to repent of those things or repent of some sin or confess their sin to you, I pray that right now your conviction power will come upon us because this is our moment. This is not the time to just play the game. This is the time to get in the game. We've got to get in the game. If you're in this room or if you're online right now, nobody's looking around, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. And if that's you and you say, hey, I need, I need Christ right now in this moment. I need God. I need him to forgive me of some sin that's in my life. Would you just slip up your hand right now? Just slip up your hand. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, right back here. I see you, sir. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, I see your hand right there. Yes, right up there. I see you. I see you over here, sir. God bless you. God bless you. There's hands that's just going up. If you're online right now, all you have to do is pray this prayer. And we're not just repeating a prayer today. We're repenting of our sins. We want God to change our lives. Say this prayer with me, everybody that's raised their hand. Or maybe you felt it in your heart. Say, Jesus, I come before you today knowing that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Change me. Here I am. I give you my all. I repent of my sins. I turn from my wicked ways. I will serve you from this day forward. Save my life. Help me when I'm in need. Show me your ways. Thank you for becoming my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God a big hand clap. Come on.